a fishy smell at your place. Not the one a nice salmon steak has. Doesn't mean you forgot to throw away the garbage with last night's dinner fish bones. Such a noxious odor means you may want to check the electrical equipment in your home. Frayed wires, faulty breakers, overheated electrical systems, and overloaded circuits may smell fishy. All those wires are coated with plastic that emits fish odor when it heats up significantly. If you smell rotten eggs in your house, Uh call the plumber straight away. The most obvious reason is the sewage and drain problems. But such a smell can also be produced if you've got problems with the water heater. Another possible culprit might be a gas leak. Manufacturers add some distinct bad-smelling chemical to natural gas so that people could notice even the tiniest leak on the spot. Some believe you can smell carbon monoxide thanks to these additives, but unfortunately, it doesn't work this way. This gas is a dangerous byproduct of burning, and it's not stored anywhere, unlike natural gas, so no scent can be added to it. Beware! As many other nasty things, mold does have a smell, Hmm. and a rather distinct one. It smells earthy and musty. It's not uncommon to find it wherever water is present and trapped, like an unknown leak in the walls. Mold spores can grow as a result of this moist patch and can cause pretty serious health issues. Another reason why your bathroom may smell kind of funky is the stagnant water or some residues in the drain. If you've already called the plumber but they can only come the day after tomorrow, well, there's a cool hack on how to mask the smell. Add a couple of drops of any essential oil that you like on the toilet paper roll. Yeah, the problem is still here, but at least you don't choke on this stagnant stink. If you blame the toilet brush on the stink in your bathroom, squirt some scented detergent right into the holder. You can also create your own DIY scent, mixing a glass of distilled water, a tablespoon of your favorite essential oil, and a tablespoon of rubbing alcohol. The latter's going to take care of those bacteria, and essential oil will hide the bad smells. Plus, it's not likely to cause any allergic reactions. Dishwasher is supposed to be resident clean, but in fact, the moldy smell in your kitchen can come from there. Warm and damp environment is perfect for mold spores. And if there's some food residue, it's just a real paradise for mold. To get rid of it, run a dry heat cycle with no dishes. Make sure you've flushed all the interiors, including the filters and panels. Sometimes the silverware baskets can get pretty moldy too. Remove them and soak them in some diluted antibacterial detergent for an hour or so. Rinse thoroughly before using. If you're allergic to mold, get ready for all kinds of nasty symptoms like cough, sneezing, itch, you name it. Sometimes people live with these chronic problems and have no idea it's because mold is growing in places they can't see with their own eyes. If you do find mold in your home, say, in the bathroom where it's often wet, non-ammonia cleaner or dish soap can be used to remove it. Be sure to protect your skin with gloves and wear long sleeves and a respirator to keep yourself from breathing in the spores. If you have a particularly large area of mold, it's best to hire a professional to come take care of it in the safest way possible. Your towel may smell moldy, too. Make sure you don't use the same towel more than three times in a row. It accumulates bacteria, plus a wet and dirty towel can be pretty smelly. A couple of extra pinches of baking soda once in a few washings will help get rid of all the bacteria. If your bedroom smells rotten, the problem may be about your mattress. Recent tests taken from 7-year-old mattresses showed there were over 15 million colony-forming units of bacteria per square inch. It's like the whole universe in your bed. There are all kinds of filth, yeast, mold, Uh even staphylococcus bacteria. Baking soda may help you out again. Sift some on the mattress and let it sit for half an hour. Then clean it with a vacuum. It's better if you got a brush attachment. Beware of weird sounds at your place, too. Clicking and knocking in winter or fall, of course, can be explained by turning on the heating for the first time during the cold season. Sometimes the problem is about the radiators and some condensed steam stuck in the system. It's all about the air that expands and contracts in the radiators because of temperature change. 
To fix it, you may want to try bleeding the radiators. Bubbling sound in your home may be of a different nature. Strangely, it may be the sound of a water leak. If you're not sure, shut off the water main again and listen attentively. In case the sound stops when the line's off and comes back as soon as it's on, call the plumber. If nothing changes, it may be the water heater. Sometimes the sediment stays at the tank bottom and bubbles every time the water gets heated, so draining the tank could be a great idea. If the AC filter is dirty, it may produce some quite weird blood-curdling sound. A dirty filter means the split system can't suck in the air freely, so it has to get it from around the filter. It may not be that obvious during the day, but it's gonna drive you nuts at night. Well, just change the filter and have your sweetest dreams. If you're planning to move into a new house, check the walls before picking one. Surprisingly, walls covered with 20 layers of paint are a good reason to worry. Unlike old cracked walls, fresh paint is a telltale sign. Probably there's something to hide. Ask the landlord why they had to urgently cover those walls. Now, look at the ceiling. Once you know about the dangers of popcorn ceilings, you'll never want one hovering above your head again. That's because not only do popcorn ceilings collect dust and look, well, really ugly, they can contain a toxic substance called, cue the horror music, asbestos. Asbestos is made up of a whole alphabet soup of naturally occurring and hard-to-pronounce crystal fibers. What makes asbestos a desirable building material is its crazy strength and ability to withstand high temperatures. It can also be resistant to chemicals and even electricity. Some old homes may have more than one layer of roofing, and sometimes these could contain asbestos. Too many trees in the front yard pose a certain danger too. They may fall during a storm or even catch fire because of lightning. Remember that removing trees can be pricey. Plus, various shrubs can hide thousands of bugs you don't want to have in your house. Of course, when nasty little roaches and ants invade your home, you go for something really poisonous. Unfortunately, those pesticides you're dousing them in are bad for you too. To prevent this from happening, always clean up any bug spray you use in your home after it served its purpose. And be sure to store any pesticides away from food products or anything else that touches your skin. Underneath a sink or in a garage is usually a safe bet. Your carpeting may seem innocuous enough, but it's emitting some potentially dangerous chemicals known as volatile organic compounds VOCs, which come from the glues and dyes in the carpet. Remember that your new carpet might release various chemicals during the first days. You also should consider that carpet can trap pollutants, dust mites, pet dander, mold, dirt, and more that can adversely affect anyone with respiratory issues. To prevent potential hazards, keep the windows open for the first few days after the new carpet is installed so the VOCs can escape and vacuum your carpeted floors regularly to rid the fibers of potential pollutants. Wow, I think I'll move to a cave. Sounds safer. Hmm, is that a bear?